Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. It's episode 64. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week, fresh from his cruise, tan, sick, and a little dick, <laughs> it's Ian Gibson. <laughs> ah, you got two, two out of three. <laughs> I don't know which the third one was, but that's me. I'm back, baby. I know you guys didn't have an episode last week, so it's been two weeks since you've heard what we've been playing and our live reacts to the news. Oh, you're but so we're funny. back. So funny. I um, love that bit. It's it's really good. It's a really good bit. Almost as good as your yeah. uh, saying I'm bad at Elden Ring bit. So good. Oh, um, God, that is a good bit. That is 100% one of those bits that is not funny to anybody else. That is purely for my own satisfaction. Literally makes my that blood bit. boil. <laughs> the most infuriating thing. It's just so funny because I was like, it was like, I'm, I'm like a, I don't want to say a souls born hater, but I'm like a souls born non liker. <laughs> but now that I'm somewhat of a souls born liker, I have to immediately go to souls born asshole. There's no middle ground. That's, and the worst that's part the whole is. Bit. You always do the bit when I can't vouch for myself. <laughs> yes. But it's funny because, look, I'm not saying I'm right, but I didn't realize you were doing, like, a magic heavy build at the beginning. And I was like, oh, he kind of is a scrub. Because, like, I didn't do magic because I didn't want to go. I didn't want it easy. And it was just oh. funny. Oh. Magic. I mean, yeah. I switch. I, I mean, not to get into it. Melee is way easier than magic. I switched to back to melee. Oh, in, I, in Elden Ring? Yeah, the the melee or the magic. The only thing is being able to attack enemies easily without like pulling out a bow and doing ranged. Like magic helps with doing like doing ranged stuff without yeah making it overcomplicated. But the most yeah. difficult part of magic in Elden Ring is I don't know how to cast it. Sorceries or incantations. I have I think I have one incantation. I just don't I don't know how. Maybe you, you could have... explain that to me. We got some time. I don't. I I equipped it in my top slot. Yeah, and you have a staff. No. Okay, so you need a staff to cast magic. Okay, spells. but what's the difference? What's the difference between sorcerer, sorcery, and incantation? Incantations are for faith builds, and they use faith. And then sorcerers use magic, and they use intelligence. But you still need a staff for both of them. No. So so faith uses talismans. I think they use talismans. I actually don't remember what they use. Um, I've never, I've never done faith in any from software game ever. Look, you're kind of proving my point here, which is that that's one of those UX things where like they they make it kind of complicated yeah. equipping and and using and, the magic. And I agree, but uh, but like faith is always like the I play this game a ton and I have a faith build. Like oh check out my faith build. Like that's always like a oh, gotcha. like, higher yeah. level thing. But yeah, um, you need a uh, staff. Best way to get that since you you were talking about. I mean, I think I, I think I have a I think I have a staff. Yeah, I, 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 that. The problem is for that to be viable to me, I need to pump a lot of levels into stuff, and I would rather use that towards my main stuff as opposed to getting my dog shit levels up to medium shit. You know what I mean? That's so true. it's like. It's it's like I want to mess around with it, but at the same time, I would kind of have to go backwards to mess around with it and then forwards. So uh, it's just I don't know, you know. Yeah. But um, but the reason why I the reason why I did pick melee was because I remember when we were doing Dark Souls, etc. I I think it was you, but it was also a lot of other people that were just like, hey, if you're not sure if you're going to be good at this game or not. Just pick the range stuff at the beginning, and it's going to be easier for you to get used to the game that way. And so playing Elden Ring, I was like, I need to give this a shot. If I'm going to give this a shot, I need to get good at this game. So I'm going melee, and I, I ended up going sword board. Because, the so I mean, the, the board gives me some. Yeah. Gives me some cushion. I know I, I need um, the cushion. I'm at the point. Actually, this is a good segue, because I'm at the point where um, I, I use the pickaxe exclusively. I don't, there's probably a better weapon, but it's like plus 19 now, and I two-hand it. So yeah. I just stick with yeah. that. And then I, I have, I respect, so I have magic when I need it. And I got, I, I just got those where I summon three rocks and it shoots them. So those are pretty good. Oh, that's for pretty cool. Some fruit spells, but they're not nearly as powerful as they were when I was a full uh, magic user. Uh, but what is uh, happening now uh, mm -hmm. is I'm just like pumping everything into that uh, strength and like vigor and like getting super powerful and 
I so I was like, oh, I'm probably pretty good with this. So I finally got to like the northern portion of the map, and I was doing a boss fight. And um, this is my segue now. I was doing a boss fight. I did it like three or four times, and I was getting kind of close. But they nerfed the mimic, uh, Ash. Yeah, the, the mimic Ash. Yeah, and not in a bad way, but it used to be like it's it's very like makes sense now. But it used to be so OP. Um, and so I was using it for a while and it's not OP in the way where it's like, that's the reason I won, like summoning another person would be, but it's because it's literally a mimic of you. So they have so much health that like the boss is distracted for so long that you can just focus on attacking the boss and not have to worry about dodging really. Um, and that's to a point, like I've done a couple bosses now with the lower mimic and it's way like incredible incredibly harder now because that mimic dies so fast uh long story short i was doing this boss four or five times and i was kind of pissed off and i was like i know i could go level a little bit and take this guy on but i i want to get to this next part because i want to do this other thing so i was like let me see if there's someone i can summon it's a long segue yeah i know well i'm i'm doing the gameplay now uh so uh i i summon someone and i'm like oh sweet uh I could bring this up in in local chat and be like, see, not not every summon is like I let the other person do work for me. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, I, I forgot. Yeah, you you are using summons to beat all the bosses. Right, I forgot right. that that's another weapon I can use against this you. This is the as first I look time down upon you. This is the first time I've summoned someone since, uh, like hour five. Since and the I'm last boss you fought, you. Yeah, 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 totally. yeah. Gotcha. Um. So I summon them, and I'm like, oh, this guy looks cool. Walk into the boss arena. I start running towards the boss. This beam of magic shoots past me and kills the boss before I get a single hit in. And I was like, <laughs> oh, it just proved Ian right so That worked. Hard. That worked. I was so <laughs> mad. I was so <laughs> mad. Uh, That's funny. That's funny. I, I have thought about doing the opposite, which is letting myself be summoned into other people other people's world and then just like being like check it out and just doing so bad and immediately getting hit by the boss and just being like that's what you get for summoning people you scrub <laughs> you're the worst thing <laughs> that's, yeah, ever. It's, like, it's, it's so funny because it's not like i'm deliberately failing i'm just bad so i know I, and that's the first time i've like i've had someone like in past from software games when you summon someone they're usually just there to help you out and it's rare mm-hmm. that there's that kind of overlap. And that's the first time I've ever had someone just be like, oh, I can just take this boss on for you. It's just like, oh, uh, no, I don't. I didn't want that. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, I thought it was, it was a side boss anyways. But I was just like so frustrated because I kept dying. I was like, I just want to get this over with. Um, but uh, yeah, Elden Ring's going good. I'm like 63 hours in. I think I'm nearing the end. I, I, I came to a point where I could get to the end. And a literal wall appeared and stopped me um so i have to do i was trying to cheese it and i have to do a thing to get past this wall that has appeared and i was like that kind of sucks Um, there's so much in this game that you can cheese that sucks so that you can't cheese let me run past i'm gonna ask you a question have you tried hitting the wall no it was very clearly i ran past the thing i'm supposed to fight boss fight music started and then there's like a magic wall that appears around them oh gotcha to stop you you from just running to the to the next spot so that's kind of what hit me that makes sense um have you been playing elden ring anymore since your uh cruise i have been playing elden ring some more um i'm not i'm i I can't remember what i did when i came back so i'll just kind of talk about the days before the cruise and then coming back playing more elden ring I finished Stormvale Castle. I beat Godric. Nice. Um, I was kind of wandering around a bit. I I logged on today and I was just like, you know what? Let's just do it. And I went and did the the Sleeping Dragon and got like eighty thousand runes and leveled up like five or six times. So I think I'm like level forty one now or something like that. Um, and then I I think I'm like se- and then I did like seventy five percent of the academy hogwarts today uh i beat i bit the red dog whatever his name yeah. is in, in first time just dunzo boom took him that out was pretty fun and now i think i'm about to hit re, 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 renaissance. renaissance um 
Yeah, I don't know. I just I I I I think what I didn't describe properly last time is that like I I feel like I'm just on a constant knife knife edge with this game where at any moment I could fall off this game and just not play it anymore. And whether that's because there's a new game comes along or because I finally get tired of it or because I get too busy. But I do keep coming back to it. But the truth is, like, I think this is more a statement on me than the game. But there are things about the game is that I'm just not really enjoying playing it anymore, you know, but it's like there's nothing else to do. So I'm just like, yeah, "Yeah, I guess I'll sit down. And then the problem is Elden Ring is everywhere. So everybody's like, well, look at this. Look at this. Isn't this crazy? Look at that. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should play some more. And then I play some more and I'm like, yeah, I guess that was satisfying in a way. But it's just, um, uh, let me put it this way. I have some problems with the game. And it's it's weird because the problems I have with the game that kind of make me feel like I'm, I don't want to say wasting my time, but that make me feel like I'm not enjoying it, also make the game good. So it's it's this weird like game design dilemma I have. So basically the problem I'm having is that when I play the game, I have so many different things that I can do or places that I can go. Mm. But like 95% of the time, if I go somewhere and I find some items, the items are either massively overleveled for me or they're not applicable to my build at all. Or they're just like crafting items and I'm just like, okay, I'm probably never going to use this. So it's this weird sense of like I am exploring and quote unquote making progress, but I don't feel like I am actually finding anything worth exploring for. In terms of like literal, like level up better items, etc. And then the yeah. other day I was like, like, you know, the remains armor set. Um, Amy. You get it from the guy at the round table hold after you fight him. How do you not know about that? What are you talking about? Look, I'm going to tell you this. This is not a spoiler because everybody's been talking about it. But basically, if you go find half of a medallion in this random location and you go back to the round table hold the guy that never talks to you that just leans oh, against yeah, the wall yeah, yeah, yeah. he turns hostile and you fight him and when you kill him he drops his whole armor set i didn't know and that's I, what caused it yeah see i only knew that because it was all over like it was all over like tiktok and twitter because it's, it's very easy like you can basically get to this location a couple hours into the game if you cheese it, but I had kind of already been there. I just hadn't gotten the medallion yet. And and then I was like looking up stuff and I'm like, okay, well maybe I need to give myself a goal where, where I find out like what's the best armor or whatever for where I'm at in the game. And I try and go get that, you know, like I'm giving myself goals and like the people were like, Hey, this armor's great. I'm like, okay. And it was just like, you got to go here, get this medallion, then go fight him. I'm like, okay. So I spent like 30, 40 minutes doing that because I had to explore where it was, get the medallion, go back, fight him. I go to put the armor set on and I'm like, wait a minute, if I put the full armor set on, it gives me like a 2%. I think the full armor set is like 8% health regeneration below 25% health. And I'm like, but I already have this talisman that gives me like two health per second when I'm out of combat up to 100%, which is better than the armor set. Slower, but better. And then I like I was looking at the stats and I'm like, and this random ass armor that I kind of have like thrown together over the last couple hours is better stats. And then I was like, this is just useless. Like, it's this weird <laughs> thing where it's like, I'm either wandering around just finding random things, 99% of which are just not applicable to me, or they're they're like crafting stuff that I'm just not going to use. Or I try and like look things up to be like, let me give myself a goal, which is a problem with the game in that you're having to look all this crazy stuff up. And then I go through the process of getting it and it's like, well, it turns out it wasn't really that worth it. And it's it's just, you know what I mean? It's just kind of this weird thing where I, I, I am enjoying exploring the world. There's just not nearly enough payoff for me to be invested in the game. Is that making yeah. any sense? No, I get what you say. I think I think the difference, I mean, at least for me, is I think the I like to explore and seeing the stuff is my payoff. Like, I really don't care about items. Yeah, and, and I am I am enjoying that. Yes. Yeah. Seeing like because there's a huge environment and world design and enemy variety that anywhere you go, you're gonna find you're gonna find something new and interesting to look at. Yeah, totally. But I get what you're saying. Like I haven't equipped a new like I'll find items and then my goal will be to level up to equip that item. Um is is something yeah. I do a lot. Um and then 
mostly like my goal for the longest time was just to fill out the map which i mean seems obvious but it's like i just want to get to places to like yeah to like uncover stuff and explore different areas and now the other thing i do is once i'm once like once i beat an area i go back to the previous area and fully scout that one because i know i'll be nice and over leveled for it and then i'll go to the next area finish that and then scout the previous so it's like i'm always doubling back on everything um part part of it's my own fault because i got i got into this loop for a couple hours where i was literally just like i'm gonna go to a place that i'm not sure i can fight and i started to get in some fights and i either barely win them or i lose and then i'm like okay i can't win these fights i'm just gonna cheese it and then i'm literally just running around on my horse picking up every single item i see but then 99% of the items don't apply to me. So I've uncovered this big area. I've gotten all the items in the area and I can't really use any of them. And I didn't fight anybody. So I didn't get any runes. So at the end of three hours, I'm like, I uncovered this area. And, but in terms of like level skill or items, I have gotten nowhere. And then I'm just like, and, and again, that's, yeah. that's on me. Cause that's my play style. But at the same time, like, look, I, I don't think this should be an Ubisoft game. I really don't want them to hold my hand. But at the same time, the way they have it now where there is just random ass stuff that is somehow connected to each other and literally the best way, like, and in a lot of cases, the only way to understand it is to just look stuff up online outside of the game. That's bad. That's bad. And and again, I don't want them to handhold me. I don't want like quest breadcrumbs, but they got to make that a little bit better because like if if even if there was just people being like ah you're a warrior i hear the warriors gather behind the wonderfall to the war- to the north and it's like oh cool there's probably warrior stuff up there now i'll go there as opposed to it's like there's hints of like something's going down here but you don't know if it actually applies to you or not and it's just again these are these these are relatively minor quibbles with the game but it's those things that are keeping me on a knife's edge of yeah sure i'll play it but as soon as something comes along or as soon as i get just a little bit more bored with it I'm going to drop it, you know? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm getting to the point where I kind of want to finish and then come back to it later. Um, like Mm -hmm. just, and like not necessarily jump into like a new game plus, but at least finish, uh, and get like an ending or something and then wait to like for more stuff to come out and then like, okay, I'll, I'll jump back in. Or if there's ever like a a DLC or something like that, you know? Yeah. Or, or even just, you know, Soulsborne is an itch that you get every now and then. And now you have something that, will satisfy that soul sport itch because there's guaranteed to be stuff in there you missed you know yeah, totally uh yeah so i think so I'm again totally- I, I i still think the game's great i am definitely engaging with it and liking it a lot more than i have previous Soulsborne games i i'm just i'm just still struggling with some of the game design decisions they made whether those decisions are in my mind objectively bad or just subjectively bad for me and right. so it's kind of like this yeah i'll keep playing it for now but who knows how much longer I'll play it. Now, question. Um, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take your time. Of of the games that are on our nominee list this year, would you say it's game oh. of the year so far? And that will that would be Nobody Saves the World, Pokemon Arceus, uh, Vampire Survivors, and Elden Ring. Do, do you want... Should we do a little ranking exercise real quick? Because there's only four of them, right? Yeah. No, we can't rank. I, you know what? Honestly, we should make a rule. We can't s- explicitly rank. We can pick a top for the year so far, but we can't explicitly rank. Because I feel like end of the year is when we rank. Um, I, I, you know, I was thinking about this. For me, nobody saves the world is better. It's, it's similar in some ways. It's different in a lot of ways. But I think just like the sheer creativity of the different forms and abilities of nobody saves the world. And then the, the ability to mix and match them in crazy ways to come up with builds that makes it so, so, so good. Um, it's, it's a tough contention, but for me, I think nobody saves the world is the better game. I know that's crazy to say, but yeah, I like, I would agree, but I think nobody saved the world falls apart in its, not quite level design, but I think it, it overstays its welcome in the way it wants you to play that game. And I, I just don't yeah. enjoy it. Like, I want it to keep getting more powerful, and they keep setting you back. And I feel like that game is also really hard um, at a certain point. No. 
Well, no, it's it's not that it's really hard. It's that they open the world up at some point where you can very easily go to yeah. a place that you should not be. You know, like if you try a place that's like three or four levels above you, it will hurt you. You know, the, that that level, there's a very fine level zone in which you're you're still OK and below yeah. you're OK. But if and you go too high up, boom, you're done. And I also got to the point where I was getting fatigued of how many like things I was unlocking, like costumes, and I wasn't sure what. Like, you have to go back and start leveling up a new one again, but you're super weak. So it's like, do I go back to, like, a newer area to work that one off? Like, No, well, no. Well, it's you're not super you're not super weak. You just don't have all the abilities unlocked. When you go back to a previous form, it doesn't revert your level. Right, but you can, like, yeah. barely do any damage, all that sort of stuff. I, I mean, you kind of can, but I think it's more about you only have, like, one or two abilities unlocked, and you don't have the full slots unlocked. Yeah. So so it, it, it relimits your gameplay. But I but honestly, I really love that system because when you switch to the other form, it's like, no, hey, buddy, tut, tut, tut. You got to learn these basic abilities first and then we'll let you start messing with the build. It, like the horse, like the first time I read the horse, I was like, I'm never playing as the horse. I don't want to. A backwards kick is the stupidest thing in the world. But then when I was like, OK, I have to level up the horse within like 20 minutes of playing the horse, I was like. Yo, I love the horse. It's my favorite now. And it's because they forced me to do the basic abilities. Okay. Anyways, we're starting the game of the year discussion, but clearly nobody yeah. saves the world is the front runner. I do I do I did like uh the buff guy in Nobody Saves the World. Using oh. that for a Yeah, did you notice did you notice yeah. he would do one, two, three, four? I think he would do a little count uh, while he's doing it. God, really that good. game's so good. Cool. It's so good. Cool. Vampire, Vampire Survivors. Vampire Vampire Survivors. Very good. Very good. I, 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 I totally understand. I can, I'm totally fine with Elden Ring. People loving Elden Ring more than nobody saves the world. I think it's more of a, at that point between those two, it's a personal choice, I would say. But yeah, Vampire Survivors, number one. Um, okay. Uh, what was I going to talk about? Oh, sorry. So that's our Elden Ring talk. Um, moving on, I was just going to shout out. I bought the, uh, look at me. I, I'm amazing. I bought the Ukraine itch.io bundle. Uh, which is wild because I still haven't sorted through the Black Lives Matter or racial equality bundle they sold me last year, two years ago. Yeah, um, and I think there's only like a 20 or 30% overlap, I think I saw. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So I, I, I've i gone through most of the Ukraine one. I have, and we have to do something about this. I have a folder of of like 80 tabletop video games of like or not video games tabletop games of like print and play and like little rpgs and like one page rpgs you know and what i was thinking about the other day was we did have the original iteration of tabletop rgb was a one shot every episode yeah so i have a which was things. fun and a bunch yeah. of them are two player ones uh not oh, that's good because that, then that, we don't have to invite anybody yeah exactly now. uh sure okay um, so, uh, one of the games that came Wipers. in that was Hidden Folks, which is a game I've actually always wanted to play. I, I don't know if it's on Apple Arcade or it was before Apple Arcade, but it's basically Where's Waldo. Uh, you have little missions, uh, so you click on the person or thing you're looking for, it gives you a little hint, like, Dale wants to be a fireman, so you're like, let me go look near the firehouse. Um. Let me set a house on fire, wait for him to show up. Yeah, totally. Love that. That'd be a cool Um, game. that is a good idea. Um, uh, really, really fun game. I, uh, it's nice and relaxing. So the sound effects in that game are in mouth noises. So like mm -hmm. open a door. God, that's good stuff. Hey, it's me. Hello. Um, and Karen did not know this. So oh. <laughs> she's at her computer behind me and I'm playing hidden folks over here. And at one point she just goes, can you stop making those noises? I'm like, what? Noises? That, I stopped and listened to the Hidden Folks Man. We pretty much sound exactly the same. Um, I was like really? copying the noises. Like it's a little bit different, but I I'm pretty sure we have a, the same voice because our our it sounded almost eerily similar. And once she found out too, she's like, "This whole time I thought you were making these noises." I was like, "No," <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so it's super fun. Play it. It's in that bundle. I don't know how much it is regularly. Um, but yeah. Uh, and another game from that bundle, Eye of Raw, I played a little bit of, you're this giant satellite laser beam 
floating above the earth. Uh, and you have, it's basically gives you a windows desktop says, here's your email. Here's all your programs. There's an asteroid that's, that circles Mars, but it's getting a little too close to earth. You have to blow it up and you have to put in the coordinates for it. It aims to it. You can zoom in. You have to prime your target. You have to like query things. I, I finally got it to like lock onto the target, but I can't. It doesn't like turn to lock on, so I still have to figure out like the firing mechanism of like how to shoot things. Um, but I literally turned it on Earth and shot it, and it said you've been fired for <laughs> for insubordination. God, this looks so good. Eye of Raw. It's really cool. It it reminds me of um two games. One was uh, it was a little bit more artsy, but it still had a lot of those like technical mechanical elements. And it was a guy who had experience in either it was a U.S. military combat veteran, either from Iraq or Afghanistan. And the game was you like call you were you were fire control. So people in the field would call you and be like, you know, requesting fire support and you would have to like put in the targets oh, and, and it's awesome. not like first person aiming it, but it's like, you're looking at like a map and you're like having a calculator and you're trying to like do targets. And he would have little vignettes here of like, Oh, that's where my buddy died. You know, like things like that. And it was like really cool. And the other one is there's a couple games. I think I only tried one of them for like 10 minutes that are just Sam simulators like surface to air missile what? system simulators. So you're you're in you're in the it's not really a cockpit, but you're you're in the little cabin. You have these screens in front of you and like the radar goes off and you're just like trying to lock onto them and launch the SAM missiles. That's what this looks like is like literally you are a technician inside a little cubby hole trying to do things. Yeah. It's it's really fun. I had a blast with it. Uh I want to check it out more. It's definitely one of those games that's like still <laughs> not still being worked on, but it's like Hey, here's this thing. Figure it out. It's not like holding your hand or anything. You're like, mm-hmm. how do I do this? Um, Ooh. itch. I discovered itch is full of those games that are like, hey, do you want a super realistic thing? And it's just gonna be hard because it's super realistic. Like there was a U-boat mm-hmm. simulator of like a German U-boat, oh. and it's literally just, you know, that picture of the U-boat where it's just all, uh, uh, what are those called? Valves everywhere. Yeah, it's just that. It's like, oh, have That's... fun. Here's a technical manual for a U-boat. Yes. Um, and there's a couple of those that I've thought me, you, and Zach should do a stream of us trying to figure out. It's like barrow trauma yeah. on like steroids. Yeah, we've we've talked about it. Like if if all of us had VR headsets, there is a VR multiplayer U-boot game, basically, that is supposed to be very good. Wild. Well, actually, I don't want to say very good. It looks very fun. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh that was my Ukrainian bundle. Uh there's still so much more in there that I'm slowly going through. Um, I had everything downloaded into folders and I was kind of upset because I couldn't really see anything. And then I remembered itch has a steam GOG galaxy like where they like show you all the, oh. the screenshots and stuff in the thing. So, um, and it, it has all of your, your books and stuff, not just the games in there as well. And you can filter them. Uh, wow. Cause honestly that, uh... I wasn't sure about buying the bundle just because I was like, look, I want to support Ukraine. But at the same time, I don't need this massive zip file full of random games. But yeah, if there's actually like a good interface for it. And the site for downloading isn't too bad. It's just a list um, that you slowly go through. But uh, yeah, it's uh, that HIO app. How, just real quick. How does that is it? Is it like a downloadable app? And it knows the games assigned to you, kind of like Steam, or is it a browser-based app, or is it you it's point a it in a folder app, and it indexes? But from what I can tell, it's a it's a glorified browser, like it's a itch browser, and it just like it like the store gotcha. page in it goes to a URL in the thing. But I think gotcha. uh, so. Like you can install stuff through it and play stuff through it, uh, rather than just oh, yeah, running that does all look... the stuff. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I'm looking at pictures now. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, highly recommend it. Uh, is it the bundle still going on right now? I think so. Uh, I mean, the war's still going on, so pro- hopefully. Not to be obscene, but <laughs> we didn't solve it. We didn't solve it with <laughs> the bundle. We didn't solve it, folks. Um, it's still going. Cool. Yeah. They're at $6.3 million doll hairs. Bam. And I believe, what's... Oh, no, I think I was looking at the Humble. What's the... Is there a minimum on this? Oh, no, it ended. It ended last Friday at 3 a.m. Why did it end? I think they were only doing it for a couple days. 
Did the war end? No, I think it's like that's they're a just bad joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, I know, but it's Ian, one of those I'll things. I'll send you where... all the games because they're DRM free. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> there you go. Actually, I'll just ask you for the ones I want. Like cross code, I've heard is very good. Yeah. Um, Actually, yeah, I just want Eye of Ra. Right. Look, like I said, I just need something to to pull me away from Elden Ring. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about your, uh, games you've been playing that's written down here? Yeah. I went on a cruise. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about the cruise too much. If you want to hear about the cruise, you can go check out episode 10 of My First Kingdom Hearts 2, where I basically just spent a long time talking about it. Probably the first hour. I would say it was entertaining. I had a lot to say. I'm not going to be doing that here. Um, but I will, I did play some games on the cruise. They had an arcade on the cruise. Um... They had some good games that, that it was actually kind of funny. Uh, some of the games were ticket based where you get tickets and you turn them in and they had the one, you know, the one that's kind of like Wheel of Fortune where it's a, I mean, sorry, not Wheel of Fortune, like Price is Right, where there's a big vertical wheel and you yeah, I love push that a one. handle and it spins it. My niece did that and she got a thousand tickets. <laughs> she she hit the little thousand ticket thing. Yeah. Wow. She's four years old. It was like good for her. Um, but the problem was the ticket machine they had. So she had like a thousand tickets. They had little capsules, like not Japanese capsules, but like Japanese style capsules, little things in them. They were a hundred tickets each. They had like a single, they had multiples, but it was one style of Harry Potter, little tiny four inch plushie for like 500 tickets. And then it was like wireless earbuds for like 5,000 tickets. So she just got 10 capsules, but honestly she was happy with that. So she just sat there like doing, nice. it was a little vending machine with the tickets. They had a really cool one, which was um, it was a, it was a it was a sh it was a shooting game. So you're standing there and you're standing about five feet away and they had all these plastic bottles and when and the plastic bottles had a target on it. And if you shot the target on the plastic bottle, the plastic bottle would like break and then go down and it had like 10 rounds. So like the first round is like stationary and then the bottles start moving and they start flopping up and down. And I had a lot of fun with that one. That was a cool one. Um, the other one that I got to play was a Formula One simulator. It was like a full blown, I'll have to post the picture on Twitter, I just realized I didn't do it, but it was literally a full F1 car minus the suspension and wheels, but like the full cockpit and everything. And the halo, although they weren't putting the halo down because it was kind of annoying. But yeah, so you climb into the cockpit and they had like an actual sim rig set up. They had a sim rig, they had pedals, um, and again, you're you're in the car, like in an F1 car, you're basically like almost, I don't want to say fully reclined, but basically your feet are at the height of your shoulders. Um, and then the wheel had a full screen on it and everything, which was cool. Like it had like a five inch screen on it. It was showing your lap times, your shift and everything. So it was a pretty well done sim and they had like three, three curved screens. I'm going to say each screen was probably 42 inches. So it gave you like a a semi wraparound view. And it was pretty funny. They were just playing a set of Corsa, uh, which I have. It, it's, it's great racing sim, but it was kind of funny to see that and just be like, Oh, I have that game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they, but they had it. And you, I think I paid like 12 bucks to like play it for 10 minutes. And it was an Italian cruise line, um, or Italian company that owns the cruise line. So you were going around Monza. Um, and it was pretty fun. I, I, I think part of me is like, oh, the sim's not super accurate. Like they had they had some assistance in there, <laughs> granted. But it was still pretty cool to like sit in an F1 cockpit. Like you feel like it's it looks like it's cramped because you like you literally they don't they don't turn the wheel more than 360 degrees total because you don't have enough room to do a full turn like this. Oh, I never thought about that. But at the same time, once you're in there. I didn't feel cramped at all. I actually felt kind of comfortable in there, which was surprising. Um, even that low to the ground. I mean, granted, I wasn't actually moving. I was stationary, but still like being in that quote unquote cramped position, it didn't really feel that cramped, which was kind of it was it was cool to be like, oh, this is what it feels like. Your head's basically two and a half feet off the ground and you're like almost fully reclined. Um, the other thing I did was look, I'm just going to say this and then I'm going to explain it on the cruise ship. They had a VR water slide. And you're on a cruise ship. I know, like, it's kind of weird, but it's 
like when I say VR water slide and I hear that, I go, oh, it's like you put on a VR headset and they, you pretend you're on a water slide and they spray you with water. No, it's the opposite. You are in an actual water slide wearing a wireless VR headset. <laughs> And it's it's weird. It didn't work very well. It was very stuttery, but basically, like, <laughs> it, they had they had really good water slides on the ship, which was surprising. They had four or five of them. Um, and so I went down the water slide normally the first time, and it's, like, cool, really cool. It has a long drop at the end. But then when you put on the VR and you do it that way, basically at the top, they give you the VR headset. It's wireless. They had, like, a little system to sync it and make sure it's okay. Because I think that determined, that told the headset, like, you are here and about to go down the slide. And there's probably checkpoints on the slide. And when you first put it on, it was just a live feed of the camera in front of you. Which made sense because you needed to, you know, you're not in the slide yet. So you needed to see. So you go through the seat and then you you pull yourself in. You go down the slide and um, you're on a tube. You're not just, like, laying on it. You're on a tube. Is there water Which makes it a little bit tube, easier. Or- it's, is it yeah, a non wet tube or it's a, a full, wet tube? It's a f- it's a full bone water slide, full the type that you that, okay. that you sit on an inner tube for. Right, That's what right. I meant by the tube. You're, you're sitting on an inner tube, and you're going down the water slide. It just if you want to, you can put on a VR headset for it. No, that's fine. It's just I, you know that yeah. they have those at like play play places where it's it's a tube yeah. without water, but it's still a, a tube slide. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah. This, this it's it's no, it took me a while. It took me a little bit to understand it as well because it's it's so literal but crazy. <laughs> it's literally just a water slide where you're wearing a VR <laughs> headset. And then in the VR headset, again, it was stuttery, so it wasn't working great. But basically, the VR headset was like, oh, you're not in a tube anymore. You're like going down the sails of a pirate ship and then you go down a hole in the middle of it and then you like when you when you're going around there's like an octopus reaching out for you and you go around it and then uh my nephew it was a two-person inner tube and i was wearing the vr he wasn't and he was in the front and we come down to this drop there was actually like a steep like 45 degree like 25 foot drop at the end of the slide and he's like here comes the drop and like in the thing you drop through a hole in the deck of the pirate ship and i was like okay and you're wearing the vr helmet and then all of a sudden you're just like (laughs) because like your whole world drops out from under you because the vr headset was behind like a second and i was just like (laughs) (laughs) but here's the thing honestly here's the dangerous part are you ready Folks, it's a water slide. So when I went, ah! all that, I hit the bottom and all the water went in my mouth. And so I swallowed like two cups of water because I was just like. Ah! How does the water not destroy the VR headset? I think it's just like fully waterproofed. That's wild. Um, yeah. And then and then as soon as you hit the bottom, it cuts to the camera. So you can see and be like, okay, I'm, I'm okay. I, I, let me take it off. I'm here now. But it was just like such a weird concept. But the fact that it was like free and part of the cruise, I knew it probably wasn't going to be that good. But I was like, I have to do this. I have to know what this is like. Also, it's pretty honestly, brave of you to wear a VR headset in a public place that other people have worn. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but they were like, actually, the way they did it was the water park was open for 45 minutes. And then for 15 minutes, they would sterilize all the inner tubes, all the VR headsets. And then open it back up for the next 45 minutes. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's like, even if the VR headset was like literally perfect, like I'm talking like 20K resolution, 2000 hertz, you know, it's like, it's not, you can't even feel it on you. I'd be like, no, I'd still really prefer to just do the water slide, you yeah. know, because <laughs> the water slide by itself is a lot of fun. You know, I don't need I don't need something between me and, re- and this crazy good reality. Uh, but yeah, I thought you would enjoy awesome that. thing better. Like, yeah, it worse. It's just such a weird concept that I was like, I have to do it. I have to see what it's like. Yeah, this pirate ship's really wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was pretty much it. Um, I realized by day two that I was like, man, I really should have brought like my 3DS with Advance Wars on it or something because I had some downtime, but it was also the kind of downtime where like it's too busy and annoying around you to like sit and read and you can't really sit and read for a while because you're like niece and nephew are bothering your family's got stuff going on. You just need something that you can like, I ended up playing a lot of, um, 
uh, Sudoku on my phone. Sorry, not Sudoku. I ended up playing a lot of Picross on my phone. Yeah. Just because I happened to have that installed. And, I, and it was like a good way to waste some time. But I was like, man, if I brought like my 3DS loaded with some games, I would have been. Hell yeah, that's my vacation. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, that's 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 it for my games. Nice. Um, I just want to shout out quick. Uh, Karen and I did play through the new booster tracks on Mario Kart. Mm. Um, eight. Uh, Ian, if you want to get in on a family plan, because we live together, clearly. Uh, I think I have a family plan. Okay, never mind. I um, also, I think I'm, I think I'm, let me tell you something. Never, never, never use the Google two-factor authentication app on your phone because I'm currently locked out of my Nintendo because when Nintendo required multi-factor and they were like, well, do you want to use the Google? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll use, I'll use the Google. It's on my phone. It's tied to my Google account. And then I bought a new phone. Turns out that Google multi-factor app is not tied to your Google in any way. So it was on my old phone, which is gone now. So now I just don't have it. And, and the recovery password isn't working right. So now I'm just like, I literally have to like call Nintendo support at some point and be like, look, uh, the multi-factor authentication app, it's not working anymore. So I need to send you a picture with like today's newspaper and my, and my driver's license so you can get me my account back so I can stop paying for this online stuff that I'm not using anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's See, bonkers. Mine works fine, but I wonder if it's because when I get a new phone, it's the iPhone transfer. And I wonder if that just... It, that's the thing is that I have I have other multi-factor apps and and they still work phone to phone. It's just the Google one that doesn't give you an easy way to transfer. And because it's Google, you assume it's tied to your account so you don't have to transfer it. But yeah. no, it's just a god awful multi-factor authentication app. Yeah. So yeah, I have that for a bunch that. of stuff. Um, so uh, great, great uh, recommendation here. Um, so that's uh, I think that's everything. I wanted to shout out. Uh, that's going to be it for the games we've been playing, which means it's time to move towards the news section, which means we're going to hit this button and hopefully the news team plays. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up news? I think it's raining outside and I think the window's open back there, but I'm going to fix it afterwards. Uh, folks, not too much news this week. I wanted to lead off with something incredible, Ian. Subpixel's Game of the Year inscription. Yes. Also won yes. another, I mean, another award. I mean, it doesn't really matter. They already won Subpixel's Game of the Year. Uh, but they won uh, Game of the Year at GDC this year. And I just want to do a little congratulations. So I wrote a song. Come in. Go, no. Uh, I'm just very happy for uh, Daniel Mullins and Inscription, and uh, I'm very excited that uh, that Casey's mod is out. I need to try that uh, and see yep. how that goes. Um, I forget, was it Nextlander talking about how it wasn't a great name? Because people think it's a mod, but it's not. It's an update for the game. Yeah, it is a um, little. It is a little, yeah. Which I, I see. Come see, come see. Um, so that's, um, that's the only game of the year that it's won so far i'm just looking at the wikipedia page it was nominated for the uh 25th annual dice awards game of the year but it didn't win that went to it takes two. Oh, as far as like um, an award ceremony yeah a game game awards it was not nominated for game of the year it is nominated for best game at the baftas uh the british academy game awards um didn't they already do the baftas I, this wikipedia says no I thought so as well, but seventh of April. Oh, that's when it's happening. That's weird. I could have sworn the BAFTA games. Yeah, no, but I think I could they have already did the BAFTAs. GameSpot. Did I a literally BAFTA just screen. looked at it. Well, I know, but I want to. Oh, you know what? Maybe it was the nominees that they. Did you know what? For. I just forgot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm back, baby. <laughs> no, I'm saying I think it was a nominee's stream they did. No, that's uh, fair. Just, I just like this bit of like I literally looked it up and then reconfirmed it and then gave you a date. <laughs> I love it. Still confused. Um, I just, I just, can I throw some people under the bus real quick? Why? No, they deserve it. Who? Giant bomb. Oh, okay. Didn't even put it on their top ten. 
Uh, let me confirm that real quick. That was disgusting. Like we talked about how that game needs to be in the top three mandatory. Like it is a litmus test. And the fact that it didn't even make their top 10 is bonkers. Uh, so let me just. Uh, uh, oh, no, do they not have the list? I need to confirm this, but I'm pretty sure they did not. Uh, Riveting podcasting here, folks. Googling accusations flying. Uh, yeah, it's not on here. You want to hear their list? Uh, oh, no, sorry. That's that's. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is taking a bit. <laughs> what is this? It's the weirdest. Okay, I'm gonna know. go. I'm gonna go. Uh, ten to one for Giant. Ten to Bob. one. Go, go, go. Number ten, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. I can see. Death's it. Door, Metroid Dread, Monster Hunter Rise, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Hitman Three, Resident Evil Village, Psychonauts Two, Halo Infinite, and number one is Chicory. How does Inscription not end up on that list? The only thing I can think of is none of them played it. They did, and and several of them loved it. And and when it came time to fight for it, they were just like, you know what? Inscription's probably not going to make the top 10. Absolute disgust, honestly. That's almost as bad as IGN picking Forza and Horizon 5 as the game of the year. I that was about insane. That. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I like you said, I, I love to see Inscription get as, mu- as many accolades as it has and more. It absolutely deserves them. That was such a crazy... It wasn't that crazy, but it was so easy for us to have that pseudo game of the year discussion and end up with the game of the year because we we all pretty much unanimously were like, yeah, Inscription's absolutely incredible and by far better than anything else last year. And it was well, except for like Valheim and and, and other seconds, etc. But it was just like a very clear winner. And so to see it not get game of the year all over the place is it's bonkers. Honestly, there's a conspiracy. People are getting paid. That's all I'm going to say. I'm still uh, upset anyway. about it, okay? I'm still upset. It deserved it everywhere. The game was incredible. I can't wait. How long do you think we have to wait until play it again and get like get like 75% of those initial thrills back? Not that you don't ha- not that you can't remember any of it, but just like the thrill comes back to you. I think maybe Once two the years. What do you sets think? In. Um next yeah. up on the news mm-hmm. docket, uh Fortnite has raised uh so I don't know if this is updated since I put this in here. I'm actually going to double check. Um, this was as of the 20th, which is four days ago, they had raised 50 million for Ukraine. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's an update. Uh, well, let me let me tell you, uh, basically, Fortnite Epic said, hey, any money we raise or make in Fortnite through this period of dates from March 20th to April 3rd is going directly to humanitarian relief for people affected by the war in Ukraine, which is awesome. They're not saying 10%. They're not saying buy this little cosmetic item. They, I mean, granted, they have a lot of money, but they're literally just saying every single penny we make off of Fortnite for this, I think it's a two-week period, or maybe a little bit more, is going to this really good cause. And that's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, so I, I don't think they've um, updated since the 22nd, but as of the 22nd, 50 million USD has been raised, which is... Awesome. Excuse wait wait a minute. Excuse me. You said March twenty second. Yeah. It started on the twentieth. I know. That's incredible. Good for them. Honestly, I hate Fortnite. I hate you know all you know, the just god awful things they've done. It is part of that, but I respect them for this. I want to bring this up. I was watching a streamer play Fortnite, and I kind of wanted to play it. Did you hear that? They're, the new season of Fortnite is getting rid of building, apparently. It's gone right now. You can play without building. <laughs> but we that beat Fortnite. Awesome. Don't you remember how bad it felt, though? I know, but it looked kind of fun, and I wanted to play, and mostly it kids looks play, good. we could win all the time. God, we're not going to play Fortnite. Okay, let's go back to Roblox. Honestly, yes, I would prefer Roblox. <laughs> Uh, uh, I want to talk about this next one. Tell me what's wrong with Gran Turismo 7. We talked earlier about games that could potentially pull me away from Elden Ring. Um, Gran Turismo 7 was one of those. So the game came out, I think it was four or five days before I went on the cruise. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to buy it yet 
because because if I buy it now, I'm going to play it for a couple days and then I'm going to have to take a week long break on the cruise. And I was like, OK, when I come back from the cruise, literally the day after I come back from the cruise, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy Gran Turismo 7 and I'm going to have a great time with it. And it was getting really good reviews. Uh, people were just being like Gran Turismo is back. It's got the same style. It feels really good. Uh, lots of stuff to do. And I was like, great. That sounds fantastic. All these reviews really talking about how good Gran Turismo 7 is. Here's the problem, folks. Um, they made some decisions. Uh, honestly, some of them are really cool. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you about this decision, this game design decision. Well, I'm curious to hear your feedback on this. But basically, I, I mean, I'm going to spoil you. I think this is a cool idea if done well. The, the prices of cars in the game, specifically classic cars, are tied to real life. So, for example, if you want to buy like a Nissan GTR, like an early 90s Nissan GTR, it's going to cost you $50,000. Even though uh, even though most other games, it'd be like, oh, we'll just charge you what it was originally worth, like $20,000. Or, oh, it's an old car, we'll charge you $10,000. But it's like, no, current market value of that car is $50,000. And I think they have a way of fluctuating that based on current market values for these cars. I mean, that's a pretty cool idea, right? Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, it's like actually car collecting. But the problem is, apparently... Gran Turismo 7 gives you credits very slowly. Uh, you know, you typically earn credits by doing races. You get more credits for longer races or harder races. Uh, apparently, they give you credits very slowly. And at the same time, they are selling credits via microtransactions. And they turned all that on after the, uh, the reviews. So basically, you have these cars that come out that you just can't you're just not going to reasonably ever be able to afford. So for example, this is from at thunder underscore THR on Twitter. He gives an example. Uh, they released the McLaren F1 in, um, in Gran Turismo Sport. I mean, sorry, Gran Turismo 7. It cost 18.5 million credits. Guess how much that cost in real life money, Will? Uh... And if you just bought those credits, very close, 250 Canadian dollars. I'm saying Canadian just because that's what this guy did the math for. It costs you 250 Canadian dollars in microtransactions to buy enough to win this car. Um, and according to the, the rough calculation, if you grind the best way possible, you'll earn about 900,000 credits per hour. So you would have to play the game for about 20 hours, solid grind, just to get enough credits to buy this car granted oh. it's a top tier car but basically they, they they've saturated the game with microtransactions and reduced the 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 non-money credit earning ways to such an extent that it's what it's ruining the game not yeah i i don't mean to get old man but what happened the days when like a car game came out and you're playing and stuff and <laughs> then it's like i don't want to play this that much and then you just put in the cheat code and give you all the cars and then you could just like do whatever the crap. Yeah. Like, I more this happens, the more I wish games separated single player unlocks and multiplayer unlocks in a way where it's like not not. I know that's a slippery slope. Like, it's it's great that they're no, no. the same now, but I would love an yeah. offline Gran Turismo Seven where I have all the cars and I'm I'm buying them and I'm making tons of money, and then when I go online to show off to my friends, it only lets me show off the ones that I got through multiplayer means. Yeah. I mean, but it's, it's, just, it's, it's like, like Forza horizon does this. They have cars that you can only buy. Like literally you can only get this as part of the $15 DLC pack. They have cars that are so expensive that you're really just going to either have to grind a lot to get to them, not grind this much or just buy some credits. Um, but the difference with Forza is they have like four or 500 cars yeah. And the way Forza Horizon feels, a.k.a. not great, there's not really that much difference between, like, cars of the same class and speed. There's really not. They all kind of feel the same. Not all the cars, but just, like, an S1900 car feels like another S1900 car. There's not a huge difference. But Gran Turismo 7 
takes its racing seriously. Like it feels good. And when you get in these cars, like the interiors are and the exteriors are modeled really well. So it's like it's like I mean, you and I have done this in racing games and in Gran Turismo, it's the best is like, oh, I used to own a Honda Civic and they have my old model Honda Civic in here. Let's get in it. And you're like, whoa, this feels the same. I, I have a 1990 Miata. So like they have multiple first gen Miatas in this game. It's like, yeah, let me get in there. You know, it's yeah. like, I want to, I want to experience what these cars look like, but also kind of feel like. And so being able to do that with these cool sports, sports cars is awesome in Gran Turismo because those different sports cars actually matter. So you actually do want to go for a specific sports car or try multiples of them. Cause they're not, they don't all feel the same. They feel unique. They feel cool. This is your only chance to buy, to like somewhat drive a McLaren F1. And they've locked it behind a $250 paywall, essentially. $250 or 20 hour grind. And that's. It, now, can you still and, use and those to be cars? clear? Sorry. Just real quick. When I say 20 hour grind, it means like you are picking a very specific race with a very specific configuration because that gets you the most money. And you are just doing that single race over and over again for 20 hours. It's not playing the game for 20 hours, it's literally a repetitive that's grind wild. for 20 hours. I was going to yeah. say, are there at least missions and stuff where you get to drive cars you don't own? Or do you have to own? I think so. Okay. Probably. But, but, but it's, it's probably still pretty rare. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not like five hours in the game. They're going to be like, Hey, check out this McLaren F1 drive it for this race. I don't, yeah, I, they like, typically don't do why, that. Again, uh, that's another thing is like, I mean, I guess Forza does this, but like race in a car and you do get first place, you unlock that car, you know, like that sort yeah. of like offer other, I mean, there are other services really stupid. Yeah, and then I'll touch on it real quick, but basically there's there's a bigger problem, which is Gran Turismo 7 had a recent patch that went so poorly that they basically had to take the game offline for 24 hours, and this is an online-only game, so when the game is offline, you can only play, like, specific arcade, it's my understanding, you can only play specific arcade races with zero payout for you, so you're, you're it's kind of like when you're installing a game and you just have, like, a little snippet that you can play over and over again. That's all that's available when the server's offline. And it was offline for 24 hours. And then just after that, PlayStation Network was offline for a couple hours. So this game is just having all sorts of controversies and problems, which sucks because apparently the actual like feel of the game, both in the driving and like the user experience and like the chill menu vibe is awesome. But I don't want to drop 60, 70 bucks on this right now, even though I really want to play it because it sounds like the experience is just not, it's not worth that much money right now with how much it's yeah, monetized. That's, Man, that makes me angry. I don't like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, cause I was also like, this was the game series you were talking about, where it's like, you not learn to like drive, obviously, but like it feels good to drive and it lets you get used to like tougher driving yeah. games. And I was kind of and you and you learn. Yeah, and and like literally as part of the game. As part of the training in the game, they teach you racing fundamentals. You know, like here's how to navigate S curves. Here's what it means, like entry point, apex, act, exit point. And those those fundamentals are literally racing fundamentals that you can take to other more serious racing games, or you can take on the street. Like I have, not that I'm street racing, but it's like when I got it, when I want to get a little speedy, or when I'm going through a corner a little too fast, I can feel the weight balance and I understand what's going on there. In part because of the lessons taught by Gran Turismo, the series is fantastic. I think the core gameplay in Gran Turismo Seven is supposed to be fantastic based on the reviews. They've just wasted all that goodwill with all these bad game design decisions around it wild um wild. playstation has purchased haven studios um haven studios. am i am i supposed to be excited about this no i we barely i barely even touched it on work like i i this was one of those things that came through it's like oh playstation bought them um i don't even know what they have they made anything i don't even know anything so haven them. haven uh is being led by jade raymond and I believe Jade Raymond's definitely known for being one of the lead creators of the Assassin's Creed series. But sorry, I'm just I'm just Googling her real quick to see if she's done anything else. That's what I'm doing. Far Cry 4. I mean, she has done other stuff. Good. She was a producer on Sims Online, Assassin's Creed, uh, watched Dog executive two. producer on Watch Dogs. Ugh. Yeah, I, I don't So That's the thing is that she's she's made she's made good AAA games. But I don't know that I would say they are great. Yeah. I mean, Assassin's you Creed know? One and Assassin's Creed Two are incredible games. 
Um, yes. But those yes. are the only games on this list that I would say are incredible games. Far Cry 4 is pretty yes. good, but it's no, no Far and Cry we're, 3. Yes, we're also, um, we're also kind of skipping the fact that she spent two and a half years at Stadia. And as far oh, as we can tell, yeah. absolutely nothing came out of that. So this is one of those things where it's like, I feel like there is a lot of talent at Haven, but it's not necessarily talent that consistently delivers quality. Um, and so it's 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 not that surprising because the other thing was um, when Haven was founded, they had an exclusivity deal with Sony Interactive. I don't want to say exclusivity deal. Sony Interactive invested in the studio to create a new original IP for PlayStation. So they were tied at the hip with PlayStation from the start. So it's not that surprising that they end up getting picked up in this whole let's buy studios war. That's like uh, it's just one of those things later. where. Yeah, pretty much. Actually, a, a year and five days later, according to the Wikipedia page. It's like I'm on that Wikipedia page too. Wow. So yeah, it's just weird. It's like it's I, I don't know. I I think it's a smart decision for Sony. I think totally. the talent at that studio and the creed means that they will put out a game that will at least make its budget back and has the potential to be amazing. But as a gamer, I'm like, let's see what they do. Yeah, it you was know? definitely um inside baseball news, I think, more than anything else, because they haven't really produced yeah. anything. Um but yeah, I feel like that's a line item where PlayStation or Sony looks at and says, hey, we're already investing this much money. If we just do a little bit more, we can secure this game and make sure it's a banger. Yeah. Um, and, and, it, and it becomes a news item and it's an easy way to tit for tat whatever studio acquisitions Xbox is doing, even yeah. though we as discerning gamers know it's not really on the same level. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what I meant where it's like, do I even care about this and it's like not really let me put my age in the witcher.com um i'll talk about this as somebody who's never played more than an hour of the witcher i just said i was born in 2006 <laughs> well, let me in now, now you're now you're ip band um but honestly something i did on the cruise was read books and i did start the witcher series Ooh. Um, it's good. It's actually, I'm, again, I'm only like 20% of the way through the first Witcher book. Um, and um, no, hands down. I'll take questions later. It's it's very close to the Netflix series in terms of the this, this setup right now is just kind of like, here's a story, here's a story, and like jumps in time. And the stories so far have been heavily used by the Netflix series, but it's still really good. So I am curious about this. Um, as somebody, again, who knows very little about the Witcher series, it, this appears to not be about Geralt or the Witchers because the teaser image is from, has a different medallion, a non-Witcher medallion. So this is probably a, they said, quote, a new Witcher series and it's uh, f changing things up a little bit. Probably won't have Geralt as the main character. Do you have any um, uh, young boy? Yes. 16-year-old uh, year year Will? Yep. Hi. Um. <clears throat> sorry, I'm a full grown man. Um. Also, Unreal Engine Five. Uh. In case you yes, that, that's important. They announced. Uh. They also double confirmed that they are still working on the uh expansion. Shut up. Cyberpunk 2077. Everybody, don't worry about it. I like, I like. Okay, look. I I I don't think they did this intentionally, but it's very funny. Um, do you have the line where they talk about Unreal Engine 5 and then they immediately after that mention the uh, Cyberpunk engine? So yeah, they say, exciting moment, we're moving from Red Engine to Unreal Engine 5, beginning a multi-year strategy partnership with Epic Games, blah, 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 blah. Red Engine, the technology which powers 2077, is still being used for development for the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077 expansion. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. It's like it's like one of those things where they're like, "Don't worry." Like in their head, their head in their head, they're saying, "Don't worry. We're still coming with the expansion, and it's not that far off because we're not changing engines. So we don't have, <laughs> you know, it's like it's not it's not years away. We're not doing an engine change for that. It's still coming, guys." And in my head, I'm going, "Oh, great! It's not the same engine that you're that had Witcher three problems and had massive cyberpunk problems. You finally have like." epic and the power of epic and the unreal engine 5 behind you to actually probably worry less about engine issues when you're trying to make the game yeah uh my question earlier was going to be you're reading is it the last wish is the first book 
Yes. Well, it's okay. so I, I Googled a couple times. I'm not an authority, but basically the several sites I checked, they said, look, don't read them in in published order because they, they there's like there's a bunch of short stories that they jump around in weird ways. And then The Witcher is introduced. And then so they had like a like an order and all of them said, start with The Last Wish. So yeah, that's what I've been I, reading. I think I have that and whatever the second book is on that list. So I, I, I'm interested to see what you. Um, what you it's good. Them. Uh, it's, it's good. It, I, I think I think honestly, the problem is I wish I was reading them fresh because like I said, they're not quite short stories, but it's like each chapter is like, here's a story in from the Witcher. And so far, like uh, most of the stories have been like, here's that one episode from the series. Here's that other episode from the series. And if I didn't have the series in the back of my head, they would be much more enthralling as opposed to me reading them and going like, oh, how are they going to do this different? Oh, yeah, that's like this one part. So I'm, I, mean, I am still really enjoying it. It's very well written. I just wish I hadn't seen the series or I had waited longer to read the books. Yeah. I, the, from the couple of people I know that read the books before the series ever came out, they absolutely hate the show and love the books, which I feel like really? is a bit of an extreme kind of thing. Similar. Man, but I think the second yeah. season is where they have a lot of their, their gripes. But I don't know. I could be. Um, I'm, still, I'm on the third book of The Wheel of Time. I finally got back to that series, and that's going well. A um, little bit of a, a slog. Um, and these final two news stories I'll hit quick. Um, Suicide Squad was a. Don't you hit delayed. them quick? Okay, you can. Yeah, you can just skip that one. The next one. To 2023. Um, this may feel like deja vu as it Faster. did to me. Uh, because Faster. it was reported by Jason Schreier a month ago. And then it was confirmed. Faster, I want the next one. I want the next uh, one. This week. So that is the latest one. Faster. Uh, next one. And we're going to go fast into this next one. We're introducing Sonic the Hedgehog 2 custom Xbox controllers. I These are one of the very few custom controllers I want, folks. They these are, are disgusting. Xbox, Xbox Series SX controllers. One is red. The other is blue. And they are both very furry with, like, I would say, like, inch-long hair on them. It's Dis- very good. Disgusting. I love it. They... These- are if you so if you dirty. have not seen these you need to look them up so they smelly. are incredible Do i want these shampoo? so badly you could i like how i like how the hair is so long that you can't see the three buttons in the middle like the menu options share buttons and even some of like the face buttons on the right hand side are like partially obscured by the hair i love these these are this is right up there with the chainsaw controller and the slime controller these are so stupid that i want them and you can only win them through a a sweepstakes which i absolutely entered because I want these. Honestly, for work, we thought of doing a parody of it. And my idea was to dye my hair blue and then shave it off and glue it to a controller. <laughs> <laughs> you should do that. I know, I really want to. But I did I did come up with a great meme, which was uh, <laughs> someone squeezing out a mop after an Elden Ring boss. <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I was just thinking the way they do they the way they do grass on like model train and dioramas, etc. Is they do like you, you put the glue paste on the on the oh, the, the, ob, the surface. And then there's like there's like a weird like electrolysis, yeah, like sticky so cool. plus a shake. So it, so it, all the grass lands standing up, which is awesome. You could totally do that to a controller. That is not that that would be awesome. You have some. I did see that. My train. Did I? Did I tell you next weekend, Saturday, there's a train show in Orlando that I'm going to because I realized after your post model train shows, model trains and scale models share a lot in common. So I really should just go to a model train show and buy all those tools and supplies. Honestly, I bought a bunch of tools and stuff (coughs) Uh, like I got a a, uh, it was actually I I should have gotten a beam square different one. But uh, yeah, I got a square, but it's a machinist square. So it has a lot of oil on it. Because it's meant for like a machine shop, but it's not that yeah. bad. But I, I might get a different, one, another one. Uh, and I got a you nice clean the oil holder, off. But it, no, no, yeah. I, I just I wasn't thinking, and it's intended for that, so it's like kind of sucks. I got to wipe all the oil. But off. that's good though, because the, the problem I'm having is trying to cut these styrene sheets 
I'm realizing a lot of my tools are either not square or they're hard to keep square. And so I'm starting to buy like machinist and like draftsman tools totally. because I need it all like perfectly square. Cause like, like when you're making the styrene, if you make a square and it's like slightly askew, it's super obvious. And it's like, and so I'm having I to get to, really good at cutting square. I, there's two things I need to get before I start my next model, which is machinist squares, which have all those holes in them. And then I need to oh, buy. Oh, you mean ABC, ABC blocks? Yeah, ABC blocks. I, I have. I just bought some of those. Yeah. And I need to get. Uh, I need to get metal accurate right angles for when I'm gluing things that need to be perfect right angles to each other. So you clamp those in the corner, and like hold yeah. the glue. Yeah. Uh, Which I guess you could like kind of do with ABC blocks. You could yeah. clamp them together, but not as good. Yeah. So I need to do that. Yeah, Anyways, I've been let's acquiring... talk about that for an hour. I've been acquiring a bunch of uh, tools and stuff because I'm going to start on that endurance model after I finish this Viking ship. So I like, I bought a bunch of paints, like Vallejo paints. I bought all the stains and stuff I need. So I can like nice. start in on this thing, uh, which will be nice. Um, that's going to be it for the show. Let me start the outro music. Hey, that worked. But it Elise. Did not change that. If you guys pay for supplies, I I will literally build you a goggles controller. I'll do it. Well, let me look into it, but I totally could. If you just pay for the supplies. Just pay for the supplies. Elise. I'm sorry. Shout out to it. Shout out to Elise from Save Data. They have a Sonic knockoff character and they're asking for their own controller, their own furry controller. That'd be pretty cool. Um folks, this is I don't I I so I, I reinstall Windows and everything. You last week all right okay i listened to the episode i didn't talk about reinstalling windows last week <laughs> no you talked about how the timer's off on I the know, up deck and again. so you have to do some traction anyways i will say reinstalling i would say reinstalling windows has been amazing everything works way better uh it's been nice uh anyways i've been will crosby that's been ian gibson this has been the show you can find all of our content i'm not ending until the song ends subpixelfilms.com <laughs> Where you can see all of our hot, hot content. Ian will be back Saturday night, 8 p.m. for some delicious oh, Kingdom Hearts 2. It is the it worst. End. I hate it. I hate watching it, but I'm there <laughs> to support you, even though you don't watch my streams. Um, no, I just wanna, absolutely not. I just want to stream others. I would rather stream Fortnite than watch you play Kingdom Hearts 2 again. It's um, too bad. It's just... 20 hours and i've probably got about 10 left <laughs> i cannot cannot believe that i hate it so much but anyways you can check that out on saturday and then tuesday and then right back here next week for local chat we'll see you all bye